Hello and welcome to our webinar with the interesting topic Wheel One Twin or Wheel Three Duo with Robotic Cell. Maximum space economy and double power for bevel gear machining. My name is Michael Sauter and I'm very pleased that so many of you are taking part today. We have two experts in the, for this topic in the studio today. Firstly, I would like to welcome Mr. Björn Svatek very warmly. As a mechanical engineer with over 20 years of experience in the sale of machine tools, he is responsible as director global sales for the worldwide sale of vertical modular machining and manufacturing systems within the EMAC group. He was also involved in the development of the manufacturing solutions that we will be presenting to you in the next minutes. And he is involved in all projects worldwide, including those for manufacturing bevel gears. Björn will guide us through the webinar today. Secondly, we have Mr. Daniele Loporchio with us. He joined the EMAC group 10 years ago as an application engineer and tooling expert with works in Björn's team. He is our current expert, not only for sales related questions, but also for all technical questions. Daniele will answer your questions directly in the live chat parallel to the presentation by Björn. Some questions from the live chat we will be discussed with our expert in this round after the webinar. There you will also have the opportunity to ask our questions directly to our experts. Bevel gears or bevel gear units are almost as old as the steam engine and still used today as power gear units in many industries. These angular gear units are used wherever high reduction ratios, torques and movements are required. It is understandable that bevel gears are produced and needed millions of time in all over the world. This was the reason for us to present you today two very interesting manufacturing solutions for soft machining of bevel gears manufacturing solutions based on our vertical self-loading machining and machines of the wheel series. This is also the title of the webinar, Wheel 1 Twin or Wheel 3 Duo with Robot Cell, Maximum Space Economy and Double Power for Bevel Gear Machining. There it was from my side at first. Now I wish you a lot of fun with our webinar and pass directly to Björn. Thank you very much, Michael, for this nice introduction and also a warm welcome from my side to the today's EMAC webinar. Yeah, Michael already mentioned there are different kind of bevel gears. Today we decided to focus on bevel gears for differential cases and the reason behind is differential cases are used in every car. So it doesn't matter if we are talking about electric driven cars, if we are talking about hybrid cars or combustion engines. So in every car you find minimum one differential case. So if we are talking about four wheel drives, you find even two of these differential cases and each differential cases is using four of these bevel gears. So if you, if you put this together, you come to a yearly production of around 500 million of these small bevel gears. And that's why we decided to focus on this during the today's webinar. So I would like to start with my presentation and afterwards we come back to the question and answer round. Okay, let's start with my presentation. In the following presentation you will learn a lot about EMAC, about processes, about turnkey solution. But if we are talking in detail about bevel gears, from my perspective there are two points extremely important. And this is first of all we have extremely short cycle times or tag times for our bevel gears. So you will learn that for simple bevel gears it will only take 25 seconds. So this is the, the minimum or the maximum cycle time. That means in consequence each 12.5 seconds one workpiece is ready. So you need a very fast automation and that's why we will show you some very smart robot cells which can handle this. 
And the second extremely important point, if we are talking about bevel gears, is the price sensitive. It's, a, it's simply a price sensitive part. So we as EMAC, we have to think how to help you in order to, to realize very small price per piece. And if we want to help you here, first of all, we have to look for a very low possible investment or the lowest possible investment. And with our VL1 twins, twin since two years, we have a very nice entry level double spindle machine, which has a good entry level price. Secondly, we can help you if we guarantee you the shortest possible tag times. So if we follow the, the sentence, time is money, I think we are on the right track. So we have to help you to find every millisecond, every second in order to, to get very attractive tag times. And last but not least, in order to guarantee you a price cost per piece, we have to also ensure a very small footprint. And you will, or I will introduce within the next 25 uh, minutes two attractive solutions from Emac. So I will start with my presentation about the VL1 Twin. It's a double spindle simultaneous machine where two identical parts are leaving the machine. So two spindles, two identical parts in the Emac uh, world means twin. And uh, afterwards I will hand over to Mr. Daniele Loporchio. He will introduce the VL3 Duo to you. It's also a double spindle machine, but uh, this machine follows the Duo concept principle, which means you have two separate working areas. Each working area has one spindle and one um, turret. Um, and this enables you to do OP10, OP20 on one machine, but for our bevel gears we will use the du Duo concept as well in the twin modus. So we will also produce on the VL3 Duo two identical bevel gears, even if it would, would also be possible to do OP10, OP20 on one, one machine. So this is the biggest difference between the VL1 twin as well as the VL3 Duo. So twin can only do identical parts, two identical parts parallel. And um, yeah, the, the second difference is for the tool positions and tool stations, we are a little lim limited for the VL1 twin. We have for each spindle four tool stations. So that's why we are using the VL1 twin for easy bevel gears. If we do not need a rolling function, if this is not required by the customer, if we need more flexibility, we go or we switch to the VL3 Duo because the VL3 Duo has life tool as an option available, has a Y axis as a, as an, as a life, uh, as an option available. And it also has for every spindle 12 station, not only four, for possible tools. So here rolling function or rolling process is not a problem at all. So whenever you need more power, a more powerful spindle, more flexibility, live tools, Y axis, or even more tools, we switch from the wheel one twin to the VL3 Duo. Before I start with the process of how to produce bevel gears, I would like to introduce the VL1 twin first of all to you. And just for you that you get a knowledge or uh, that you get a feeling about the capabilities of the machines, I would like to highlight some of the technical data. So the working area looks like a cylinder. It's a cylindric working area. You can produce a workpiece diameter of 75 millimeter and a workpiece length as well, uh, up to 75 millimeters. We have two water-cooled motor spindles which are produced, designed by Emac, and both spindles or each spindle comes with 13 kilowatts or 130 newton meters at 40% duty cycle. And we have the Emac patented turret, torque driven for faster, fa fastest possible idle times. And it's also water cooled in standard so that you have a high thermal stability. And last but not least, uh, it, is, it is controlled by a Fanuc 31i control. 
So I would now like to draw your attention to the left side of the, of the spreadsheet. Here you see the machine design and you will see two unique features. So first of all, let's have a more detailed look to the spindles. So you can see that we have two spindles here. They look as if they are connected, but there's no mechanical connection between spindle number one and spindle number two. They are only connected by software and they can move independently in X axis as well as in Z axis. So both spindles can be decoupled and can move independently on the X axis. So this is very important because after a tool change, and this is the biggest headache for twin machines, you need to compensate spindle number two uh, in, in, co compared to spindle number one in X as well as in Z axis. So after changing, for example, the carbides, you can adjust spindle two to spindle one. So this is important to know that we are not talking about one spindle head, we are talking about two spindle heads which can move independently in X. Secondly, here you see the the magnets. This is the, the this, this is part of the linear motor. The magnets are mounted on the machine, on the machine bed, and you see each spindle has a separate spindle head and Below every spindle head there is an independent linear motor. So each spindle can, can move, as I told you before, independently in X. We have chosen the linear motor not because of the high dynamics. This is also a reason, but the main reason here was to, uh, to, to give the highest possible accuracy to our customers because as I mentioned, after a tool change, you have to adjust spindle number two compared to spindle number one in X and in Z. And for a turning machine, the X dimension is the most critical one because if you go one millimeter in X direction, the diameter changes by two millimeters. So everybody knows that the X axis is the most critical axis within a, within a turning machine. So that's why highest possible accuracy is ensured by using a linear drive, a linear motor and a and direct measuring system um, directly beside the, the slide. So I can tell a lot about features of the machine, but please allow me to show you a, a brief video or an animation where you can, where I can summarize all the features briefly. So the machine is very compact. It has a width of only 1,800 1, millimeters. So this is a very compact design, only having a footprint of 4.6 square meters. So in the back, you see this automation tunnel, which has the possibility to integrate our, our track motion automation system so that you have the possibility to link different kind of machines. So here you see our basement of the machine, um, which is machined or which is produced out of polymer concrete, not out of cast iron beds. So compared to cast iron beds, um, it has much more absorbing vibration capabilities. So this means less wear for you at the, at, for, the, for the tooling, which reduces your, your, your costs. So we have these two water-cooled direct-driven motor spindles. And as you can see here, you can adjust them after a tool change in X as well as in Z direction, which is very important. And after, yeah, after a tool change, you, you can do this. Here you can see our EMAC patented uh, fast turret, which allows you to put for each spindle four tools on the, on the turret. Um, here you see our pickup uh, pick principle and also the pickup itself. Between the working area and the pickup, you will find our measuring probe, which enables you to measure 100% or some of the parts in diameter as well as in, in length. So this is our very compact, very highly efficient VL1 twin. And now I would like to switch to the application samples or to the processes. Before I start with the processes, I would like to come back to the feature dynamics. So I talked a lot of about dynamic. A linear drive is, using, uh, is used. We have very small, very tough tag times. 
and um, this is or in order to reach this you need a very good chip to chip time and I would like to show you a video from one of our customers which shows you that we only need five seconds for loading and unloading of the machine which is quite fast and this is the basement in order to ensure very short tag times to get in two pieces within five seconds and five seconds chip to chip time means uh, after the tool leaves the the workpiece it only takes five seconds until you can start machining the part again so this is what i what i would like to show you in in regards to the chip to chip time now i would like to switch to the clamping technology and normally we we have the possibility that we can use standard chucks so in this case we are using an smw apl chuck which has a clamping force of 40 bars and together with this negative um, negative uh, application you you find here it it has the neck or it looks similar to the or identical to the to the teeth of the bevel gear it's hardened as well so that you can flip over the parts you can put it in and in combination with a with a chuck in this case coming from smw you can clamp as well as orientate the part in the in the clamping device and at the end in the machine so this is the easiest possibility how to clamp the part now if we switch to the process i would like to start with a very easy process where we need no rolling so if we need rolling or not it depends on the customer it's not if we recommend it it's normally requested by the customer and in this case i show you a cycle time of only 25 seconds where we are only doing four operation we are doing the central drilling afterwards we are doing the the turning of the spherical balls then we do the finish turning of the spherical ball, uh, ball contour and last but not do, least we are doing the the internal tur turning finish turning of the centric central ball so this is the easiest possibility for tools only i use to finish the part and for this the vl1 twin is the perfect solution so i told you that cycle time is uh, one of the most important issue if we are talking about bevel gears so that's why um, we decided to combine our small footprint the dynamic of the vl1 twin with an automation which has more or less the same features so the robot cell itself also has a very small footprint and also is very fast and very efficient so we made a, or on the right side you see a, a simplified part flow which i uh, prepared for you so within 11 seconds the automation of the robot um, needs in order to load and unload the machine so two seconds for rotation of the of the swivel table three seconds to take off the parts three seconds to load the machine again two seconds to switch again to the to the changing point of the or the pickup pickup uh, device of of the spindles and then also one second again in order to change from raw part to finished part in total 11 seconds i told you that the minimum cycle time of a bevel gear is only 25 seconds so the automation or the robot has has 14 seconds space in order to do for example other things like measuring maybe you can also add an, a blow-off station you can also add a chamfer chamfer unit so this is the high flexibility a robot cell can offer to you to your shop floor and that's why from our point of view this is the right choice if we are talking about bevel gear production and if we are talking about high efficient production of bevel gears with our vl1 twin i would like to show this finally to you in a in a video as well so here you see our compact machine in combination with this robot cell so the robot also has a double gripper 
here you can see everything in a yeah first of all the pickup of the raw parts it's put on the table now it's switched to finished parts and here you see the 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 operation with only four tools of the of the bevel gear so that was rough cutting final cutting of the sphere or of the external sphere then the boring and the finish turning of the of the internal bore then the finished parts go over to a measuring unit it can come from marpos it can come from lenat it's up to you so we can we can offer it to you or you can connect it on your own to the machine so this is the highest flexibility which offers us a robot cell and that's why we think this is the best solution in combination with the VL1 twin. Yeah, now I would like to hand over to Daniela Loporchio. He will introduce the VL3 Duo more in detail to you. I told you a Duo machine um, or the VL3 Duo is a more flexible machine with more tools with a driven uh, unit, we also with a Y-axis. This is not only a machine for bevel gears, it's more flexible, so you can use it for different kind of operations. But uh, this Mr. Daniel Lopocchio will let you know more in detail. And last but not least, he will also introduce an application sample of producing or machining of a bevel gear with rolling function. Thank you and see you later. Yes, thanks to Björn Svartek for the introducing of the wheel one twin with the application sample bevel gear machining now we are coming to the machine wheel 3 duo i will introduce you in the wheel 3 duo with the maximum flexibility of bevel gears producing manufacturing the wheel 3 duo was in the last years our absolutely best seller machine we sold round about over the year 150 machines every year the machine is a machine which can fit workpieces until diameter 150 mm and workpiece lengths round about 110 mm. The wheels redo machine is equipped with a high torque direct drive spindle which has a maximum on 32 kilowatt power and the main spindle has a maximum on 5000 rpms. You can see on the numbers that the machine is really rigid, has a really rigid mechanical design. We also have spindle bearings in in front of 100 uh, diameter 100 millimeter the spindle flange has a size of 6. We have also maximum torque for a wide range of spindle speed. That means our egg corner spindle rpms is around about 1400 rpms per minute at 100% UT cycle. The machine has also absolutely rigid designed in the polymer concrete column which makes the machine really stable in itself. You can run really fast and reach really high surfaces. The machine is also equipped with two turrets. For each working area we have one turret. There we have also a live tool motor inside to do some drilling and milling operations. We can choose between BMT or VDI in the turrets interfaces. You can see here we have three axes. We have the possibility to do another axis, additional axis, the Y axis in, in the middle of the turret. The normal standard machine is equipped with two axes, X and Z axis. And additional, we can also choose the Y axis to do some milling operations, some printing operations in the work pieces. In the next page, we are coming to the application sample with bevel gear machining with rolling in more details. At first, we start with the layout. You can see here two wheel three duos all together have four spindles. Each machine has two working spindles. All the four spindles are producing bevel gears. All together, four shuttles who have a cycle time of 36 seconds. That means every 9 seconds the robot has to fit one finished part from the shuttle and bring it to the gauging unit to measure them and bring them back to the finished part conveyor. Then the robot is also equipped with a double gripper. That means he can also take in the same time when he took a part, a finished part, he has to move on the left side and can take also a row part and then fit the shuttles with new parts. On the top view you can see here that we have seven stations who has the robot to fit. That means we have the four shuttles who are coming from the machines, the finish and row part conveyor on the bottom side, and on the top side you can see the gauging unit. It means every nine seconds when a part is coming, a robot has nine seconds time 
to bring the part to the gain gene unit and then bring it back to the finished part conveyor. Now we are coming to the process of the bevel here. The most bevel gears are from material TL4277, normal forging material. And we have here a special chuck which clamps in between the teeth with some bolts. It's a pull down chuck. And then also we have some fingers who are clamping the part against the balls with our teeth. On the red side, where it's marked, we are machining for all the power. You can see inside diameters and also the spherical. The first step, what we are doing is the cutoff. We are bringing from the forging material to avoid some interrupted cut. We are bringing a cutoff and then we can drill with the first tool. 1.1 is the turning tool we're making to cut off and 2.1 is then the central drilling tool which is made central bore. 3.1 is the turning of the spherical is roughing. 4.1 is the turning of the spherical finish turning. 5.1 we are turning the bore, finish turning of the bore and 6.1 we are making the chamfer inside the hole. In 7.1 is coming the additional process, the rolling of the spherical. We are making this in a normal way with some supplier who is called Bowglees or Ecoroll. And also in the same situation in 8.1 we are making the rolling of the central ball with a supplier who is called Bowglees or Ecoroll. The complete cycle time of this bevel gears round about 36 seconds. In this page we can see a success story which we have done some test cuts in the past and then we sold also this machine and you can see here our tools where we are using. You can see our U-driller, our sparing rolling who is from our supplier Bowglees to make the outside rolling. Then the inner turning, the standard tools for the inner turning and also the inner rolling tools, which is also for Oblis. For the clamping, we use the normal SMW standard jack with a clamping force about 40 bars. But EMAC cannot only do the single machine solutions, EMAC is also a really special supplier for turnkey solution. That means EMAC has a lot of success in special projects with turnkey from beginning from the differential case or brake disc lines, for example. But the differential case is one of the most critical parts which has a lot of dimensions and diameters and a lot of features. Here we can see a solution EMAC done in the past which has the turnkey completes then only the, not only the machines also the automation and also the complete technology and service package. It means when somebody is buying a turnkey solution from IMAC, you get not only the machine and the automation from IMAC, you get also the technology package from IMAC. You can, you can have the final and pre-acceptance, including the installation and demonstration of the complete line in our plant and also your plant. We are coming to a ring gear line which is done on the wheel 5 duo. The wheel 5 duo is the bigger brother of the wheel 3 duo. Wheel 5 duo is a new machine and this machine can fit parts until diameter 250 millimeter like the example here the ring gear and this part is an example which we can do in two operations that means we can do OP1020 or we can do two times OP10 and two times OP20. The cycle time for ring gears normally around about one minute, one and a half minutes. It depends what size of a ring gear we have. The wheel 5 2 has also attractive footprint. We have round about 35 uh, square meter. This includes both working areas, and that means both machines. Also on the back side you can see a gantry system which includes and the complete cell with automation and both machines has together 35 square meter. Thank you Bjorn and thank you Daniele and for you welcome back. As already mentioned we will now come to our question section. We have some questions which you send us during the presentation and one question is what kind of additional processes do you offer, like gear cutting? In this context, I would like to come back to my presentation. Um, I think you learned that an, an, um, an bevel gear is normally machined in only one clamping. You're, so we have OP10 and we only have one process, one technology, which is hard turning or soft turning, depends on the, on the raw part. But that's it. Uh, but as you know, EMAC, EMAC offers different kind of technologies, different kind of processes. So we can also offer milling machines, gear hobbing machines, induction hardening machines, laser welding machines. 
So the, um, Daniela also showed a differential case line. So this is normal, normally the typical EMAC business to, to deliver you not machines, but to deliver you solutions for your specific part. It's not needed for the bevel gear, but we are prepared to do these kind of uh, mix of technologies, for example, for, for other gears or for, for the differential case or the whatever parts you have. Excellent. Thank you so much. One question is, with which robot manufacturers do you work together? Jörn? Frankly spoken, there's no limitation from our side. Um, so we are very open. So we hand it over to the decision of the customer. So we already realized projects with KUKA, with FANUC, with ABB, with Yakisawa. So we are not, not limited. We, we have no specific partner. So we are well prepared to connect each individual uh, customer needed and requested robot to our machines. Once more, how much do the two solutions, including the robot cell, cost? Yeah, for us it's sometimes difficult to, to answer questions in regards to the pricing. So if you deliver solutions, if you deliver whole turnkey projects, it depends on the peripheries, on the, on the request simply from the customer. But just to give you a clear example, you learned a lot about the VL1 Twin in my presentation. I remember some projects in Asia, especially for producing bevel gears. So we, we delivered both. In some projects, just a naked machine. Uh, in some cases, a full turnkey project. If we deliver a VL1 Twin full turnkey project with automation, with peripheries, measuring blowing stations, things like that, we normally reach a spindle price of 120,000 euro per spindle. If we deliver, deliver the machine only with the interfaces and the customer is doing automation solution in-house, we normally reach a spindle price of around 90 to maximum 100,000 per spindle. So, so this is just to give you an example, but it really depends on the specific customer requirements. A question from India during the live chat, do you have installed machines in India and references and by this many many greetings to India. Sure I can tell you uh, something but uh, I think it's a better choice to hand over to Daniele. He's responsible for the Indian market. I know a lot of uh, nice project he realized within the past years so I would like to hand over to him so that you get a get a feedback directly from him. Yes we sold a lot of lines to India beginning from differential case lines, CV joints, oh also brake drums and a few lines of hubs. Uh, we have also based there a market unit with, which supports our customer with services, maintenance issues and also sales engineers with our application guys. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me well? Really, really good. Uh, I have a question. How long does it take to switch from one part to another? So, yeah, the, the VL3 Duo is our top seller. We um, sold it quite often and a lot of customers are using these machines uh, for different kind of parts. So definitely you have to change the, the, um, the program, you have to change the pallets, you have to change the automation a bit. It's difficult to say how long it will take. Um, I guess it's, uh, I would say, half a day normally should be okay, but this is difficult, as I told you, to, to answer because it really depends on the process, uh, on the peripheries, um, but um, it's, if you are familiar with that, um, it's more or less, uh, you know, it's done quite, quite fast, maybe Daniela has also some experience here. Yes, we have done some, some solutions where we have set it up machines, especially we as Redo from one part to the next part, where we include everything setting up the automation, the jobs of the chuck, uh, changing the tools and everything, we can reach around about 30 to 45 minutes. But it depends from which kind of workpiece we have, which kind of uh, tools we have to change. But a rough number is 45 minutes roundabout for both spindles to change uh, the interchange parts and tools and also the automation pallets. Perfect. One of the next questions is, how much is the shortest cycle time for the machine? Again, I would like to come back to my presentation. You learned that the minimum cycle time for the robot cell for loading and unloading, for example, of a VL1 Twin, 
is around 11 seconds. So you also learned that the chip-to-chip -chip time of a VL1 twin is around 5 seconds. So yeah, just to give you a, a, a rough idea, the minimum machining time in th this case would be 6 seconds. And I think this is more or less the critical time we can reach around 6 seconds machining time in order that the machine does not need to wait for the, for the automation. Is this uh, clear or maybe uh, Daniela has something to add? Yeah, how Bjorn said, uh, we want to avoid that uh, the machine is waiting for the robot. That means our uh, real manufacturing cycle time, turning time has not to be under 6 seconds. But in the most cases, our work piece that we have here on the machine, we are longer than say the 6 seconds. Do you have milling options for the double spindle machines is one of the next questions we, we got. Yeah, so first of all I would like to differentiate between the VL1 twin as uh, well as uh, with, a, with the VL3 duo. So the VL1 twin comes with, a, with, a, with four uh, positions or stations for tooling for each spindle, but they are, they are limited, they are only uh, fixed tools. So if, we, if you need the milling function, so live tools, if you need a y-axis, we have to move to the VL3 Duo. Here we have uh, uh, on each side of the working area, we have one spindle and a, and a turret for 12 positions. So here you are much more flexible. Maybe uh, in this context, context, I would like to add another question which uh, arrives in our chat, which goes a little bit into this direction. One of you asked us, if, uh, which kind of interface we offer for our turrets, VDI or, or BMT. So we are offering for both machine both. So for the VL1 twin, a VDI 30 connection or interface and the BMT 55. And for the VL3 Duo, a VDI 40 as well as a BMT 55 interface. So we are, for the, especially for the VL3 Duo, uh, highly flexible, live tool, Y-axis, BMT, VDI, everything can be chosen uh, from our customers. We are preferring Gantry automations. Can you also offer Gantry automations for your machines? I mentioned already the philosophy of EMAG is not to sell machines, to sell solutions. If you want to sell successfully solutions, you need to be flexible in the peripheries and in the automation. Uh, this is our philosophy, so we are very open. We offer robot solutions, we offer gantry solutions, we have our own automation solution called TrackMotion. So in this context, I also hand over to Daniela. Maybe he can give you some example from some projects, but gantry, TrackMotion, robot, everything is possible. Yeah, how Bjorn said, we have a big knowledge in gantry solutions, robot solution, or generally in automation solutions. For us it's absolutely no problem to connect one, two, three or four machines together with a gantry. Uh, we showed you only in the presentation the robot solution, but in any case we can offer you a, a gantry solution. We have done this for over 20 years and this for us a daily business. Excellent. Oh, a lot of questions. Yeah. Um, can you do hardening machining in VL1 machines is one question. Yeah. Now we have a different kind of machine platform for hardening. So the VL series is a single spindle pickup turning machine. So we offer the technology turning at, at this uh, machine platform. But we also have induction hardening machines and, and these can be, can be also included in a line. And we can do, for example, for rotor shafts, normally we do uh, soft turning one part, soft turning second part, we do laser welding, we do induction hardening, afterwards we do hard turn, grind, so all kind of technologies. So the, the, the rotor of an electric motor is a good example where you see all kind of EMAC technologies connected. But coming back to your questions, the VL machine can only, only let's say, turn, but we have uh, induction hardening machines which can be added as a second machine and then you can do the hardening process <laughs> afterwards. Um, one more question. How long back phasing can be done? How much radial phasing length is one question. Yeah, it depends from workpiece to workpiece. Uh, in general, we have to look uh, how much is the workpiece and the diameter inside to make back phase chamfering in front. But the wheel one twin is made for work, 
workpiece diameter 75 and workpiece length 75 and the wheel one wheel three duo is 450 diameter workpiece diameter and the length is 110 limited but in general we have to look which kind of workpiece we have to, to have the right solution for back face chamfering and face yeah. turning. Yeah, the next question we received is um, for bevel gears, how many parts can be stacked at time on the VL1 twin? Yeah, it depends. Um, if you choose the VL1 twin together with our track motion and you use a stacker, for example, on the, on the right side, you can easily store up to 400 work pieces so you, you, you stack them on different kind of pallets. So normally we limit, limit this to around 400 work pieces. And yeah, if you, if you choose a robot cell, um, it, it, it really depends. It, it can also be more, but uh, yeah, it, it depends on how much trace you, you include. Um, it's, it's, there's, there's really not, there's re not really a limit, but um, maybe you can, uh, Daniela, report from some of your projects. Did you reach more than 400? Yes. Years? Yes, we have done solutions where we have stocked part on a stacker more than 800 to go over one shift and to have uh, less interruption on the process. But also, it's possible to do only 400 or 800. It's, it depends which uh, specification has the customer has. But it's absolutely no problem to go over the normal standard limit. Uh, last questions. Question is, we have a product for machining where roughness is the main issue. So during machining there will be generation of metal chips. What technology do you offer along with the machine to avoid chips to struck with tooling or product? Okay, I think it's related to chip fall, things like that. So first of all, I think if you switch to, if you go to EMAC, you are first of all in the right uh, in the right area, we are we are pr we are producing and selling vertical turning machines. They have the big advantage that the chip fall is much much better compared to horizontal machines. So first of all, we do not have these kind of problems with with chips in the working area as maybe other companies have with horizontal concepts. Uh, but we also offer additional flushing so that, that uh, whenever there's a problem uh, that we flush the working area with, with a lot of cooling liquid. So then everything due to the vertical concept uh, normally falls into the, the tray of the, the chip conveyor. Um, but we also have at our pickup station, we also have blow off um, um, options and in order to get rid of the chips at the pickup, we also can offer some, some blowing func functions after uh, um, uh, pick, uh, bringing the, the, the workpiece on the, on the pickup so that the, that the chuck and the, yeah, the chuck itself is also uh, uh, yeah, focused with some air so that the, that the chips are, are going away from the, from the workpiece. We have a lot of experience with this since 20 years, 25 years we are selling successfully vertical uh, machines. We are, by the way, we invented this and showed the first one in the nine in the early 90s. So we have a lot of experience, and uh, yeah, maybe you want to add, Daniela. So yeah, how Bjorn said, uh, we have there a lot of functions in the working area. It's absolutely no problem. We can begin with cooling through the spindle to avoid chips in the chuck, or we are we blow with some area before we go outside the work pieces that will avoid if we have chips on the pickup station. Otherwise we can put some pipes on the turret to flash the part ex extra with high pressure. There we are really flexible and we have a lot of solutions in the last years and uh, we have there, let's say, absolutely no problem. We find every time a, a, a really good solutions for our customer. We have now reached the end of our webinar and hope that you are will be able to take some interesting impulses with you. We would like to thank you once again for your participation. Many thanks for the two colleagues and experts in the studio. Maybe we'll be, we will meet us again in one of the next webinars. Until then, bye bye and stay healthy.